The plane's going down, the oxygen masks drop. You need to put it on yourself first before you can help anybody else. It's the same with stress. Don't you agree? I don't know. I think I'm too stressed out. <laughs> to even think through this? Hey, don't stress. Don't stress. Okay, mended life. <laughs> In our lives and in our relationships, we can have all the skills in the world, right? We can read the books, do the podcasts, watch these videos, like go to therapy. You can learn everything you need for a healthy relationship or to deal with your emotions. Mm -hmm. But if you're stressed out and yeah. you're overloaded, all of that can just go to the wayside Yeah. and you'll forget it all. I want to read a quote by Elizabeth Earnshaw, who is a family therapist just like you. Yay. As a couples therapist, I was doing everything I'd been taught to do in school, and yet I was missing one key component, recognizing the role stress plays on how couples can navigate everything from intimacy to communication to decision-making. I realized it didn't matter how much I knew about relationships. If I was stressed out and overwhelmed, the skills I knew about weren't going to improve my marriage, let alone the couples coming into my office. Teaching the couples I worked with how to communicate better wasn't going to fix things either. Having nice conversations solves nothing when you're drowning. You have to learn to manage your stress first. So then she asks the question, how? <laughs> how do you learn to manage the stress? Well, and that's the point of this video. We want to share with you uh, the things that we have learned that have helped us. Mm -hmm. And then encourage you to share below the things that help you to manage stress. So we have just a giant like utility belt, like Batman's utility belt where he's got just the thing for the situation, where you've got all these tools from you, from me, from ye. We're listening. Wait, we are? First, we're gonna watch a clip from The Office where we're gonna see how the character of Andy manages his stress, see if it gives us any ideas. Val, I need the space. All right, guys, clear out. Everybody out. Promise me you're gonna clean up. I can't promise what I'm gonna do or not do. Promise me that you- Obviously, gonna... I'm gonna clean up. Stress is like the uptight mayor of a town who's saying, hey, we're uptight, you can't dance. And then you have to be like, oh yeah, Mayor Stress? Well, watch this. And then, we dance. Oh, how we dance. This is Footloose. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Sex also works. So random. Yeah, well, the tap dancing on the bubble wrap. The reason I chose this wrapping yourself up in plastic wrap. Uh huh. All things I never considered, but maybe now I will. No, but ironically, the reason I chose this clip is because it reminded me of you. Uh, really? Not specifically the song or the manner of dancing. Okay. But how many times have I seen you stressed and you look at our daughter and you're like, dance party? Oh, that's true. <laughs> that's true. You turn on a song and you guys will have a dance party for a few minutes. Dancing is a great way to move energy. <laughs> Singing really loud in your car with the bass all the way up. Yeah, well, and that's, and that's me. So uh, you're, you're more of a dancer, I'm more of a singer. So let's talk about what, what works for us. And again, a reason why it's important to manage your stress first is because you may have all sorts of skills that you won't put into practice because you're too overloaded. I was working at a group home for at-risk teenagers and they taught us how to do healthy restraints. Like if a team was gonna hurt themselves or somebody else, how to restrain them without hurting them. Yeah. And they said, we're gonna practice these over and over, and we're also gonna practice how to keep yourself calm when the teen is, is cursing at you right. and breaking things. Yeah. Because otherwise you're gonna be stressed and you're gonna forget all of this training and you're just gonna try something you saw in a Jackie Chan movie. And I, I'll never forget that because it was a Jackie Chan reference. Uh, <laughs> so how do you de-stress? So here's what works for me. Speaking out loud to myself or my higher power. Uh, I'm a prayer person and so a lot of the whole give it to God thing, like I definitely say, mm -hmm. here, like just take this because I don't even want to deal with it. Or in, my, in the car by myself, sometimes it's speaking to myself. Uh, an exercise that I heard that I love to do 
is to pretend the person, if I'm upset with a person, pretend that person is sitting next to me and I just really let them have it. Because in real life, I wanna have a more productive conversation, but I can't have that productive conversation until the ugly one is out of my system. Mm. Otherwise, like the ugly one, the ugly version is gonna seep into the productive version I'm trying to have. And the great thing about the ugly version is I don't even have to worry if I'm, what I'm saying is right. I'm just saying what I feel, right? I don't censor myself. I might curse. The good news is, is if you're dri- I like to do it when I'm driving. Because mm-hmm. if you do it when you're driving mm-hmm. and anyone sees you, they don't think you're crazy. They just think you're chewing somebody out on Bluetooth. This is true. Right? And so I just, I just really let them have it. Uh, another version of that is writing in... So, so I really want to know how many times you've done that. <laughs> Uh, with you, me, yeah. with imaginary you, so many, so many. Been a few times, sure, but <laughs> but then that led to more productive conversations because another another benefit of that mm-hmm. is I get out the emotion of it, yeah. but then I also hear what I'm thinking, how it sounds once it's out yeah. there, yeah. And then I can kind of unpack. Okay, that one. Now that I hear it, I don't believe that. That one, I believe, but not in as mean a way as it came you're out with ab- all you're that. You're able to differentiate between yeah. like, oh, here's reality and here's the emotion of what I'm yeah. feeling. I swear by this. Yeah. Well, and as someone like a, a dreamer and a healer, they are going to interact with the word world more emotionally, yeah. right? And so it's like that. that is a very powerful skill for you because it's like, oh, I have to work through these emotions. I can't just stuff them or pretend that like they're not there. Yeah. Yep. Love that. And then I do journaling and I do a written version of that. I have written several like ugly, ugly, angry journal entries. Then that I later like delete and say, we're not going to save that one for posterity, but it sure felt good to like get it out. Right. My poor keyboard. And another benefit of writing though, is my thoughts can be a jungle, a jumbled mess. Mm-hmm. especially because there's so much emotion there. So when I write, I can start to organize mm-hmm. and I can start to think things through. And in organizing and thinking things through, I can see what I accept, what I challenge, what's a little t truth that's not really true, a, a, ne- a negative self-belief that I'm going to replace with something else. I can get all of that out on paper. So that's really helpful for me. Singing. Uh, what we saw in that office clip, Take that, but less dancing and more karaoke, but the exact same geeky, mm-hmm. pathetic, awesome energy. Pathosome. Uh, <laughs> that's me at a karaoke place. I love exercising. Our son said something to you the other night because uh-huh. I was frustrated, and what did he tell you? Oh, he, he said, well, Dad hasn't been able to go to the gym, and it's just been really hard. Because <laughs> that's what I told him, right? I was, I was short-tempered with the kids, like, not nasty just a little a little sharper than normal and I said I'm sorry guys it's not an excuse but I haven't I didn't get my workout in today and I didn't have any place to put all of this stress right so exercising is a big one for me when I exercise I find I'm a lot more patient a lot more kind a lot more understanding and so if I have a lot of stress or anger or frustration or even sadness and I can put it into a workout feel better and those these positive endorphins are released. Before I was really an adult, I loved serious heavy movies. Teenager, early 20s, message movies, you know, <laughs> that really, your Schindler's List. I love these movies because I, I wanted to learn and grow as a person. And now that I have enough real life, not comparing my life to Schindler's List, I'm, no, I'm not. I'm just saying now that I have enough like real life stressors, I would much rather escape into fantasy. That helps me to reset. Uh, and people say, you want to see this? Oscar contender, I'm like, uh, it sounds like a downer. <laughs> oh, no. And then talking with trusted loved ones or with counselors has also been very beneficial for me. What helps you with your stress? Oh, so many things. Krav Maga, I'll tell you that right now. It's true. <laughs> it's true. Sometimes you just need to hit someone. I got to hit someone. With better, their consent and their pattern. Better, yeah, it's better if they're consenting. <laughs> Don't pull no punches with me, boy. Let's see what you got in the ball. Come on out. I either need to cry or I need to hit something, right? Yeah. And it, it can very much so feel like like the same uh, emotion. But anything from like, depending on what you're needing, like the comfort of a soft blanket, a warm cup of tea. I also really value journaling. Being out in the sunshine, like seasonal affective disorder is a thing for me. When I am sad, if I get in the sun or in warm water, the world becomes a happier place, yeah. whether that's a shower or the beach or a lake or a pool. <laughs> you want to know this woman? I can sum this woman up. You're a very complicated 
brilliant woman, okay. and yet you can be summed up in three words. Okay. Warmth is happiness. <laughs> True. Currently, I have ice cubes for. Hands. Oh my gosh! <laughs> We're sitting in front of a fire. How does this even? My hands are not in front of the fire. There's a circulation issue. So I really appreciate this conversation around stress. So in our membership site, we did a podcast on a book. You can be happy no matter what. And and there was a lot of things in the book that I was like, I'm not so sure about this. But one golden nugget for me that I took away from it is that the goal in life is not to increase your ability to handle stress. And I had just this like lightning bolt moment because I realized my entire life I had been orienting myself to handle more and more stress. Yeah. And so that was just increasing my capacity to handle stress. But wouldn't you know it, like there is no shortage of stress in the world. Yeah. And so at no point oh. was my capacity going to get large enough that I'm like, I can handle all the stress yeah. that's ever going to happen. Yep. I don't know if any of you dear viewers are like me and you need these morsels of truth. The goal is to lower your tolerance to stress. Surprisingly, the solution to stress is to begin to lower all, uh, surprisingly. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Surprisingly, the solution to stress is to begin to lower our, our tolerance to stress. Mm. This is the opposite of what most of us have been taught but it is the truth. Also, add funny noises. So tolerance doesn't mean the place where you're just maxed out and stressed out. Right. It means the place where you draw the line for yourself and say, this is what I'm gonna manage today and I'm gonna take time for me or I'm gonna take care of myself yeah. instead of all just go, 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 no matter how stressed I am. And we are way better off psychologically if we do that, which begs the question of what is the purpose of stress? The purpose of stress is to let us know like that something's off, that we need to do something differently. Yeah. The author in You Can Be Happy No Matter What phrases it as psychological danger. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I would go that far, but whatever. Yeah. But it's like we're headed in a direction that is not supportive. We're headed in a direction that's not serving us. Like something's off yeah. and we need to figure out what's off. That is the purpose of stress. And so therefore, our goal isn't to increase our stress capability. Our goal is to lower it. So asking yourself the question, is my tolerance to stress too high? Mm -hmm. And then, honestly, this was the best thing I got out of this book. Is I read this book and there was a lot of things I didn't agree with, but I was like, my tolerance to stress is far too high. <laughs> I've been trending in the wrong direction and I didn't even know it. The level of stress in our lives will always be exactly the same as our current tolerance level. There is a tendency when we feel stressed to put our, our foot to the floor, roll up our sleeves and get to work. If you're a closer, you might really relate to that. That can be any personality trait, but closers yeah. especially so. Despite the urgency we feel, a reduction in stress will never be the result. When we feel stressed, it's time to ease up, take a break, stop thinking so much, clear our minds. When we do so, we will feel better and rebound quickly. To live a life of reduced stress, the goal is to lower our tolerance to stress. In time, we, we will be able to catch stress early on and eliminate it before it can overwhelm us. Um, and I, it, was about, uh, it was about two years ago, a little less than two years ago, that I realized that my solution to almost any problem in life was to work harder. Yeah. And, and I truly believed, like, whether it was a problem I created or someone else created or it just was what it was, it was like, oh, if there's a problem, the solution is to work. What I realized in small doses, like, that skill can be very helpful. Yeah. Like, there are definitely times in life where you're like, oh, the solution is, is to work or to roll up your sleeves. But when when the solution is always just to work harder, yeah. life tool applied across all scenarios is like a hammer. Yeah. It, like it's a very hammer energy. It's a very hammer solution. Um, and when you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. The only thing is everything in life isn't, isn't a nail. A nail. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so I just wanted to share that experience be because it, like I just sitting there, I'm like, oh man, at almost 40, like I had oriented my life in such a way that work was always the solution yeah. and work isn't always the solution. Mm. Um, very often rest is the solution and we don't need to increase our ability to handle stress. Yeah. We need to look at it as an indicator that life isn't working. And 
uh, we need to look at it as an indicator that something isn't working and asking ourselves, what do I need to feel loved and supported? Right. Excellent points as always, Alicia. Explode it. All right. So we want to hear from you. What helps you to manage your stress? What are your tips? What are your pointers? What are your experiences? Let's get the conversation going in our community down below. Oh, and I was going to ask, have you ever tried to outwork stress? Please let me know I'm not alone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or avoid it. I know I'm not alone. And if you enjoyed this video, check out why traditional therapy is failing. Another video we have uh, sometimes. Obviously, a lot of times it works, but there's room for growth. And we're going to talk about how. Until next time, folks, keep shining. We need your light.